programs very often make choices. For example, we might say, if a user has an exam score over 80, print a success message. Or if the user's name comes after a friend's name alphabetically, print the friend's name first. Or if adding a new number to an array makes it contain more than three items, remove the oldest item. Or if we ask the user to enter their name and they type nothing at all, give them the default name of anonymous. Now Swift handles all these things with if statements, which let us check a condition and run some code if that condition is true when the code is run. And they look like this. If some condition, print do something. So the condition starts with if, which signals to Swift we want to check some kind of condition in our code at this point when it runs. The some condition part is where you write your condition. Was the score over 80? Does the array contain more than three items? And so forth. And if that condition turns out to be true, if the score really is over 80 or whatever, then the middle part runs, the do something line. Now, of course, that isn't everything in the code. I didn't mention these little symbols. Open brace and close brace, sometimes called curly braces or curly brackets. They're just braces, really. And they're used extensively in Swift to mark start and end of code. The opening brace marks the start of some code. Closing brace marks the end of the code. And inside those two is all the code we want to run if our condition happens to be true when it's checked, which in our case is just printing a message. But you can include more. You can include as many lines of code in there as you want. We could print do something, do something else, do a third thing, and so forth. And all three of those things we printed if some condition is true. Of course, what really matters here is some condition. Because that's where your checking code comes into play. What condition do you actually want to check? Well, let's try the score example. We've got a score constant equal to 85. If the score is over 80, let's print a message. Great job. And then end the closing brace. So if, in this case, score is greater than 80, is our condition. That's it right there. You remember the greater than symbol from school, meaning is greater than. Uh, so our complete condition is read out loud. If score is greater than 80, then uh, print great job. Now that greater than symbol is a comparison operator because it compares two things and returns a Boolean result. Is the thing on the left greater than the thing on the right? Uh, if so, true, otherwise false. There's also a left angle bracket for uh, less than, uh, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and more. Let's try it out with some example code in Xcode. So I'm gonna say, first, let's make some example pieces of data. Let's say uh, we have let speed equals 88, let percentage equals 85, and let age equals 18. And now we can write some example checks here. Have a think as I'm going what the output might be. If speed is greater than or equal to 88, our printout where we're going, we don't need roads. Then we'll say, if percentage is less than 85, print, sorry, you failed the test. Then one last one, if age is greater or equal to 18, print, print even, you're eligible to vote. I'll hit run in a second, but first think through mentally what that code might print and why. I'll press run now. Boom. So we get two of the print statements being run here. This first one, speed is greater than or equal to 88, that will become true, and therefore we'll run the code print da -da 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 if speed is greater than or equal to 88. Well, it's exactly 88. So that's valid, that is true, therefore this is printed. Next up, the second one. If percentage is less than 85, then it'll print, sorry, fail the test. Well, percentage is currently exactly 85. 
And so this test will not pass. It'll return false and therefore the code will not be printed. And then finally, if age is greater than or equal to 18, print eligible for vote. Age is exactly 18, so that's also valid. So that's our first set of conditions out of the way, scoring and similar. Let's try our second example condition. I'll make a bit of space down here somewhere. Uh, if the user entered a name that comes after their friend's name when sorted alphabetically, put the friend's name first. Now you've seen how uh, less than and greater than or equal to and similar work great with numbers, but they also work equally, equally well with strings out of the box. We could say something like, uh, let our name be Dave Lister and let friend name be Arnold Rimmer. And we can say, if our name is less than friend name, print uh, it's our name versus friend name. Uh, if it's the other way around, if friend name uh, is, or our name is greater than friend name even, friend name, then I'll do print it's friend name versus our name. So it prints in the correct order regardless of what the two names are. So the string here in our name comes before the string in friend name, then we'll print uh, our name versus friend name. Otherwise, if our name's greater than comes after friend name in the alphabet, print friend name first. That's our second example done. Let's try a third example. If adding a number to an array makes it contain more than three items, remove the oldest one. There's always three in there at any given time. Now you've already met um, append to add to an array, you've met count to read the values in the array, you've met remove at to remove one item from the array, and so now we can put all three of these together with a condition. We could say first let's make an array of three numbers, uh, var numbers equals an array of one, two, three, I'll then add a fourth number as a test, numbers dot append four. If at this point, numbers.count is greater than three, which it will be, we'll do numbers.remove at zero, remove the oldest item, and then print numbers. So this will contain two, three, four when it finishes. Let's find out. Boom, two, three, four, as expected. It was uh, a count greater than three, so it removed the first item, which is, which is one. Now let's look at our fourth example condition, which is uh, if the user was asked to enter a name and type nothing at all, give them the default name of anonymous. To solve this, you first got to meet two other comparison operators, both of which you'll use a lot, uh, and both of which handle equality. So, so far we looked at, you know, comparing, is it less than or greater than? Comparability, now looking at equality. And the first is equals equals, and it means is equal to, and it looks like this. Uh, let country equals uh, Canada. I'll do if country is equal to Australia, then print good day. The second is exclamation mark equals. If you remember exclamation mark from Booleans, it means not to flip it around. Yeah, so this reads as not equal to. So we could see, say, uh, let name equals uh, Taylor Swift. If name is not equal to anonymous, then print welcome name, like that. So in our case, for this particular check, what we want to do really is have a variable saying what's the username the user entered, and if it ends up being an empty string, give them the default username of anon anon uh, anonymous, even. <laughs> um, let's start now. Let's say something like um, var username equals Taylor Swift 13, our default entry point for the user. They could have put nothing in here. We'll do if username is equal to an empty string, then username equals anonymous. And no matter what, at this point we can do print welcome uh, 
username like that. So I'll print welcome test of 13, but if it happened to be an empty string like that, it'll print out hopefully welcome anonymous. Boom. So that works really nicely. Um, you can see here we're comparing against an empty string, just quote, quote. Uh, we start the string double quote, end it straight away with nothing, nothing in between. It's an empty string. So by comparing username to that, we're checking if the user entered an empty string for their name, which is exactly what we're looking for, really. Now, there are other ways of doing this check, and it's important you understand what they do. Um, first, we could compare the count for the username. We say username dot count is equal to dot uh, zero. So if there are zero letters in my string, then make it anonymous. Um, now, comparing one string against another isn't fast in any language. And so, you know, we've gone from that equals quote, quote, a string comparison to a simple integer comparison, which is probably better, at least in many other languages is probably better, um, but not in Swift. Because Swift supports all sorts of complex strings. Literally every human language works out of the box of Swift. And even emoji, which is complicated behind the scenes, by the way, it's a very complicated set of systems and symbols, works great with Swift out of the box. And that is not true in so many of the languages. They just break badly with emoji. Um, however, this wonderful support in Swift has a cost, which is um, that asking any string for its count, how many letters you have, makes Swift go through and count every letter. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven, a billion. How long it's going to be? It has to count every single one. It doesn't just store the length. Oh, I've got 500 characters. It doesn't do that. It counts them all individually for various reasons. Uh, so it's quite inefficient, this check here, if count equals zero. Because it's an account of all the values and say, no, I've got a million characters, not zero. You're wrong. Um, really, all we care about here is as soon as you have one letter, you have resolved this test, quite frankly. We just want to know, is there at least one letter? As a result, Swift has a second piece of functionality to all its strings, arrays, dictionaries, and sets, which is called is empty. It will send back true if the item in question is empty. And we can fix our condition like that. We can say if username uh, dot is empty equals equals true. So if we are empty, make ourselves anonymous. And that's better. But we can actually go one step further. You see, what matters is really that your condition, whatever it is, boils down to a single Boolean, either true or false. Swift won't allow anything else, unlike many other languages. In our case, username dot is empty already is a Boolean. We haven't got to simplify it further. It's already a Boolean as it is. So we actually simplify it down to if username dot is empty like that. So if this if this thing here is true, the condition passes and it gets it to anonymous. Otherwise, the condition fails.